Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mogi Beth, and for those of y'all who are new here, I am a full-time reseller, primarily on Poshmark. Today, I have a little special guest with me, Ollie. We'll see how long he hangs out here. But we are going over my total sales for the month of July. And if this is your first time watching my total sales video, I've been doing this type of video since February, where I just go over what my total sales figure is for each month. And I do this type of video for three reasons. The first is to hold myself accountable because there's really nothing that keeps you on your game, more like telling your sales figures to thousands of people on the internet. <laughs> But then number two is to show you the different decisions I make along the way, the different brands that do well for me along the way, and then just how those decisions make an influence on my sales figures, and then seasonality and different things like that that do influence sales figures. And then the third reason is so that we can grow together and so that we can be on this climb together because I just wanted to clarify, I am nowhere on the zenith of my reselling journey. I am still scaling the mountain and I have a long ways to go. My overall goal, the place where I would feel comfortable at is making $30,000 in sales per month. And as you'll see in this video, I still have a long ways to go to get there. And at that point, I would probably reassess and see, okay, how do I feel about reselling and what do I wanna do? Do I wanna continue to grow or if I'm happy? with that level of sales. But please don't think I'm up here bragging and you know thinking that I'm hashtag goals because I'm the first one to say that I am so hungry for more, that I am very growth oriented, that I'm not okay, this isn't enough, and that we're gonna keep on uh, growing and growing and growing. However, I am way further along than I was even a year ago. And so while I am still climbing that reseller mountain, I have already covered a fair amount of distance. And so I'm hoping that through this YouTube channel, these videos, I can give tips and advice about what I've learned along the way. Okay, let's talk about July. And just to clarify, these are total sales numbers. This is revenue. This is not profit. I don't share any of my costs or expenses, including costs of goods. That's how it's always been. That's how it always will be. Thanks for understanding. We had our highest sales figure to date, our most profitable month to date. And I hope that is a sentence I continue to say for the next three to four months. But I'm super happy with our sales figures for this month. We did have a few unexpected things happen in the beginning of July that forced us to change our expectations pretty drastically, but still super happy with our progress. I'm gonna throw up a graph right here, which shows that our sales were actually really fairly consistent throughout the month. We didn't have any zero dollar sales days, which is great, especially since in the spring I did have zero dollar sales days, I think throughout a few months. We did have one day that was kind of low in sales, but otherwise it was really consistent and the weekends tend to be our highest grossing sales days, which is pretty typical for us. So let's talk about numbers. Our total sales for the month of July was $11,906.25. That's $2,835.26 more than last month, which is substantial. As usual, most of my sales were from Poshmark. However, it just continues to be more and more of my sales are on Poshmark because again, this month I did virtually no cross-listing, much to my dismay, something I'm really disappointed about. I was talking to my friend Denali on the phone and just in her YouTube channel as El Ducho, in case you don't follow her, you should definitely follow her. And she was saying, Morgan, you got a cross list. So I regret <laughs> again, not cross listing, but we still did make a good amount of money. I mean, on eBay, I have very few listings over there. So that's basically just passive income at this point. It's the work I've already put in and haven't done much over there since. So it's not bad, but geez, we could be making so much more over there. So that's frustrating. Okay, so we actually listed a good amount. We listed 608 items uh, this month. All of those 
over to Poshmark only. And that's really thanks to Tamaz and our virtual assistant, Emma, which we are so grateful to have both of them on our team. That number is 262 more than last month. So that's a definitely noteworthy increase. However, if you watched my June sales video last month, I stated that my goal was to list a thousand. And like I said earlier, we did have some changes in the beginning of the month that uh, forced us to change expectations. And that's really what I was kind of talking about. We shifted our goal to being 800. So we were still below our goal, but 608, you know, I'm not mad at. Definitely more than we've ever done before by a lot. We sold 243 items in July. That is 94 more than last month, which is something I want to point out. The amount that we listed increased by 75%, but then the amount we sold increased by 63%. And this just speaks to something that I find to be true in my reselling career. Generally, there's a lag between your increase in output and your increase in sales, which means if you list a ton this month, you won't see the benefits or the fruits of that labor until, in my experience, about two to three months later. And so, I actually talked about this in my February video because I had listed a ton in November and December of 2019 and I really felt that payoff all the way in February. So I get a lot of questions from y'all, especially people who are new, saying things like, I've been listing consistently for two weeks and it's not paying off. So this really speaks to the fact that reselling is not a get rich quick scheme. If you're looking for an industry that gives you instant gratification, it oftentimes isn't that. You can sit at your computer listing, cross listing all day long and not see a market increase in sales for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Generally my response is just keep at it. It's really easy to lose that motivation, to lose that forward motion, but only through consistency and patience will you see an increase in sales. And I think seasonality and also the coronavirus had a lot to do with the fact that your output really wasn't matching your results. Um, but also I think there's a lag. So just keep that in mind. Now that we have increased our output a lot in July, I am projecting that in a couple of months, we will see the fruits of that labor and it just continues to snowball over time. Because reselling in a lot of ways, you just have to put in the work, have faith that it will pay off, and in my reselling career, that has always been the case. Okay, so anyways, let's get back to the numbers. My average sales price, ASP, was lower this month. It was $48.20, which is actually $12.68 less than June. Um, however, June, I just had a abnormally high ASP. I think it's because I had quite a few higher ticket price sales that really kind of skewed that average, but $48 is still a very decent ASP, not too concerned with it right now. If it continues to decline, I might be fairly concerned just because I do pay for two employees to basically list and do everything for me, and I have to factor in the time they spend per listing. Uh, that is part of my cost of goods, so to speak. So, you know, I don't want to see that dip too low. I think that's a really good tip if you are working by yourself, really factor in your time into the cost of your goods. It's a, it's a form of mental accounting. I'm not saying to actually put that in your bookkeeping, but when you're trying to figure out if something is worth picking up and worth listing, really factor in how much on average does it take to photograph, list, inventory, ship an item, and then what is your time worth? And having an employee's forces me to think about things like that. Our average sales days, which is the amount of days it took for the items that sold this month to sell, the average was 79 and the median, which I think is a better indicator, was 32. That's great. Those are great numbers and really shows me that we're listing good stuff and people are wanting to purchase it. So I'm happy with that. Went down from last month. So overall, these numbers indicate to me that we are you know, on the right track. The more you list, the more that you make. And I think we'll actually see the fruits of this labor, this month's labor, even more so in a couple months, if not throughout, you know, the next 12 months. However, the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway and the biggest frustration for me right now 
is the fact that we would have made a lot more if we were cross-listing. I am debating on whether or not to hire another virtual assistant for cross-listing purposes. I have someone in mind, so I could reach out to them. However, whenever you hire someone, it's definitely worth it in the long run but in the short run it just takes a lot of your time because you have to train them you have to give them feedback regularly and then you just have to monitor their output and their work and managing people is a full-time job so if you're an entrepreneur who has other things on their plate uh, just adding more and more employees does increase the workload substantially it's something i'm considering however there are some goals for August that we are working on that does require my attention and so I might put that off for another month or two I'm not really quite sure or I might try to delegate that to Matt not really quite sure I'll check in with you next month but no matter what I'm gonna make sure that we cross list at least some this month because it's really just a sad fact that we could be making more money if we just did that okay so now I want to go over five sales from this month that I wanted to highlight. I think I learned something, had a learning lesson that was worth sharing with each of these sales. So the first one is this pair of P448 sneakers. If you're unfamiliar with this brand, it is definitely a bolo brand. This brand of sneaker is really similar to Golden Goose sneakers, if you're familiar with that brand. If not, also one you should definitely know. They are really trendy right now and they're purposefully distressed, purposefully worn in. And so these sneakers I had listed on Poshmark for $200 and then sold them for $140 two weeks after listing them. So very happy with that sale. The next sale I wanted to go over was one I made on Mercari and it was a Jenny Pacman gown. Uh, that I had listed for $125 and it sold for full price for $125. And this was actually, I actually only had a few sales from Mercari this month, but two of them were bridesmaid dresses. And this really indicates to me that future brides and groomsmen are replanning their wedding. They're getting things back on track. I know a lot of people had to scrap their plans because of coronavirus. A lot of my friends did, and I know that, that was common. So I think people are just now starting to reset those dates and commit back to having a wedding. And I saw that with different bridesmaids dresses purchases this month. Some brands that I think are good for this category, which this is not an extensive list. I could do a whole video on this, but off the top of my head, Jenny Packham. Then there's Sorella Vita, which is the other bridesmaid dress I sold to Mercari. I sold a dress by Jenny Yu this month on Poshmark, and Jenny Yu is a big, big one for bridesmaid dresses. Adriana Papel, the long floral length dresses are definitely popular for bridesmaid dresses. And then Beholden, which if you're not familiar is B-H-L-D in Beholden, it's Anthropology's wedding retail site. And they do have different stores throughout the country. They actually have an in-house brand that's just Beholden. And so if you come across one of their dresses, then it might be also worth picking up because it can sell pretty decently, especially right now. And if, I can't think of any others off the top of my head, but if there are any off the top of your head that you don't mind sharing, let me know in the comments down below because that could be a really good resource. Okay, the next sale was on Tradesy and it was this new tag. Uh, Tibby jumpsuit. I actually got this at a buy sell trade store and I had it listed for $150 and it sold for $127.50. And this is exactly why I love Tradesy. I mean, I didn't even touch Tradesy this month and yet I had a few really high priced sales just kind of out of nowhere. And so if I were you, I would definitely make sure that any items in your closet that are over $100 you have listed over to Tradesy. And my current strategy is anything over $40 I want to list over there, but at the very least getting anything listed over $100 I think is worth it because as I mentioned in my video comparing all the different platforms, which I'll link up here, Tradesy definitely has a customer base that is willing to spend more money. Okay, the next sale that I wanted to go over and highlight is a pair of Coach sneakers uh, that I had listed on Poshmark and they were listed for $100 and they sold for $100 to a guest. And um, when you see that the buyer has the username guest and then a bunch of numbers, that usually means, typically means, that they were on Google searching for whatever item they wanted, came across your listing on Google, then clicked on it and decided to purchase 
as a guest through Poshmark. This is the importance of making sure that the style name of any garment or shoe that you're listing is included in the title because the title of Poshmark listings is searchable through Google and to optimize that title for search, SEO search engine optimization, it's really including that you're including the style name and any potential keywords. The title is Precious Precious Real Estate. Make sure you're using as many characters as possible and this is one really, really good reason to do so. Okay, my last sale I wanna highlight is a pair of Todd's shoes. I actually talked about this sale over on Instagram and if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go do it. I just hit 20,000 followers, which is crazy and I'm trying to share more and more useful information over there. I love Todd's. Y'all, when I was growing up, like really young, my family took a vacation to California. I lived in Kansas. And uh, we were walking down Melrose, and my mom and I, and we stopped into Todd's, which I had never heard of because I was like little. And I was just fascinated by the shoes at Todd's, these loafers that I thought were so cool. And I was like, man, someday I really want to own a pair of these shoes. And I'm not there yet, <laughs> but I did sell a pair of these shoes and you know, that counts for something. So I had these listed for $250 and then received an offer after one day of listing for 200 and accepted that offer. So very happy about this sale. Very happy that I had the opportunity to sell a pair of Todd's shoes. And if you're not familiar with Todd's, definitely want to know. Okay. So I just want to go over a few goals for August. August is such an important month or reselling because it's the time if you haven't already to start gearing up for Q4 and Q4 is the most profitable month for all retail in my experience including reselling especially if you dabble in anything that's new with tag or any kind of retail arbitrage getting ready for the holidays is really go time so I'm focusing on listing primarily sweaters coats jeans this month and if you haven't already you can check out my fall trends video that's really influencing a lot of my sourcing decisions luckily i do have a good amount of sweaters to list right now though which i'm very excited to get up so i would like i'm gonna set a more realistic goal <laughs> i tend to really overshoot i'm gonna set the goal of listing 700 items and so that is 100 more than last month, and I feel like it's attainable. We will see. Um, there are some factors that might hinder that, but I'm gonna try my best to get to 700, and at the very, very, very least, I wanna match what we did in July. My major goal for August, though, and this is where I think it's actually just gonna have a huge impact on my overall productivity, is go to bed early. And that sounds crazy, but I'm someone who, for some reason, will stay up so late working. I'll stay up till like midnight or 1 a.m. and it's just really unhealthy. I spend the entire day tired. So I want to make a very strong habit of going to bed early, reading a book, sans technology, and then hopefully not setting my alarm, but getting up earlier just from the mere fact of going to bed earlier. So that is really kind of an unrelated reselling goal, but I think it's going to make a major impact in reselling because at the end of the day, your business relies on you. And so if you're not taking care of yourself, then your business is going to, it's going to suffer. And that's really kind of been the case. Uh, I think for the past few months, COVID definitely took an impact on all of our mental health, all of our self-care, and I'm no exception to that. So. I definitely want to focus on that. And lastly, we are creating some free resources for you guys this month. We are hopefully going to be launching the website. I know I talked about that last month. Creating a newsletter, creating free resources, and then after we get some free resources up there, hopefully creating some that will be for sale that I think are gonna be super helpful. So stay tuned for that and that's coming in the fall hopefully, but that's where my attention really is because I'm in a very lucky position where I have Tomas and Emma helping me out on the reseller front. And so Matt and I are very much focused on uh, these other things, but of course, 
a lot of my time is still spent reselling, just managing and providing my employees with the tools that they need and the feedback that they need in order to succeed. So that being said, I it is Monday. <laughs> I gotta go to my office and do some shipping. But thank y'all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here and watching along as we grow this business. And let me know in the comments down below what your goals for August are. Super curious, August is such a big month. Like let's rally, let's do some big things this month because we will thank ourselves come fall. Okay, all right, love y'all. Talk to y'all in the next one. Okay, bye. Y'all, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are now 15,000 subscribers, how cool. And uh, check out our other videos that we've done in the past. I think they might be helpful to y'all.